Hey there everyone, welcome to uh, chapter 5 section A, Transformations, Domain and Range of Polynomial Functions. Um, this is something uh, we've gone over before um, in other chapters, so I'm kind of hoping to keep this video short, and so I'm just going to go over everything um, with it pre-written down. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, so given the function, identify each transformation. So remember your transformations, if you multiply by a number bigger than one on the outside, it's a vertical stretch, which two is bigger than one. If you add on the inside, it goes left, minus on the inside goes right. So plus three made it go left three. Um, if you add on the outside, it goes up, minus on the outside goes down, so minus eight went down eight. And then I put this note here. Ignore the power. It doesn't affect the transformations. A polynomial function will have some sort of exponent in it, um, more than likely. Um, it could be a linear function, I guess, and that wouldn't have an exponent. But that's neither here nor there. Um, the next one. See, again, I circled the power, and I just wrote ignore. Um, so plus 1 on the outside went up 1. Minus 4 goes right 4 because I was on the inside. Then I'm multiplying a one-half on the outside, so that's a vertical compression, and a negative on the outside is an x-axis reflection. And then, see this? This power is the seventh power, but that's okay. It doesn't affect the transformation. Um, what does affect the transformation is this 11 over 4. That's bigger than 1, so that's going to vertically stretch it. A negative on the inside is a y-axis reflection. Negatives on the outside, x-axis reflection. So minus 5 made it go right 5, and then plus 1 made it go up 1. And those are my examples of uh, transformations. The next thing to talk about is domain and range. And I put this note on there. Important. It's important to know that odd functions always have a domain and range of all real numbers because they can move up, down, left, right freely. There's no restriction. Sure, though, they might curve at some point, but they're still moving up and down. Look at this uh, in behavior. It's going up and to the right forever. This is going down and to the left forever, so it's all real numbers. Even functions always have a domain of all real numbers, but the range can change. Okay, So the range is dependent on that highest or lowest y value. Okay. So in this example here, this is an even function, because even functions go in the same direction, both up or both down. Um, and so this domain was all real numbers, and the range was y is greater than or equal to 0, because that is the lowest y value it hit. And then the graph is going up above that. So that's really all I can say about that one. Um, let's see here. This is an odd function, because it's going in opposite directions. So the domain's all real numbers. The range is all real numbers. This one's an another even function because you have your tails or the ends of it going both down. Um, so the domain's all real numbers. And then you, we just need to look at the highest y value, which is 1.286. You see it's in both of these points. Um, and it's going below that. So it's going to be less than or equal to 1.286. And so that's all there is to say about uh, domain and range from a graph. Um, the thing I do next is, what if I give you a function? Um, given the function, determine the domain and range. So I recommend you graph each function and find the min and max, and then I wrote when necessary, because if it's an odd function, then you don't need to graph it. You can just default, go straight to saying domain's all real numbers, range is all real numbers. But on these three examples, I did graph them. Uh, I graph them anyway, whether I needed to or not. So 2 times x plus 3 to the 4th power minus 8. Um, this is an even function because of the 4th power. And so the domain's going to be all real numbers, but the range will be different. And the range is y is greater than or equal to negative 8 because negative 8 is the lowest y value, and it's going up. And so you might not have known that if you hadn't graphed it, okay? So it's a simple thing to graph, and then, you know, it's just menu 6.2 or menu 6.3 to find that min or max point. Um, 
And this one, let's see here. So uh, this long function here, 2x to the fifth power, and then you have fourth power, second power, you know, and then x, and then nothing. Um, remember, the degree is determined by the highest power. So the highest power is 5. That's an odd number. So this is an odd function, meaning uh, the domain's all real numbers, and the range is all real numbers. And I just realized that I made a typo, and it says all re numbers. So we'll fix that. Yay, all real numbers. Um, and so I graphed it. And, you know, I'm thinking, you know, what if you you don't remember that it's all real numbers, and you graph it, and you find the local max or the local min. These points don't matter because the graph is still going up and down forever. You see just over here, it's still going above this local max. Down here, it's going below this local min. So, yeah, it's it's got to be all real numbers. And then the last example here, um, here's the graph of it. It makes this kind of W-looking thing. And then I said it's an even function. Um, you can tell it's an even function because if you were to count your x's, there's four x's, so that's a degree four. Um, and also, if you when you graph it, you see that the ends are both going up, and so if they're going both up or both down, that's got to be even. Um, and the reason why I bring that up is because now we know the domain will just be all real numbers, but the range will be different. So I just need to find that lowest y value, and that was negative 85.26. And that is my range. Y is greater than or equal to negative 85.26 because that's going up. It's going above that. So, yeah, that's it for this video. Um, thank you for watching, and goodbye.